Welcome in everyone. This is Julie Max and the Main Stamper. I am so excited to be here with you for another Thursday at three. This is the time I like to come on and share fun folds and, and not hard fun folds because we're not going to be here for an hours and hours. We're going to be here for a very short time. Fun folds um, on my Thursdays are quick and easy fun folds. And this one may look familiar to some of you, but I did change some things on it too. So this is our card when it's in the closed position. And you can kind of see some ruffly things going on over here. And when you open it, I gotta, I gotta remember I'm moving this way. You're gonna open it like this. So it folds up and condenses, kind of accordion style. This is in the portrait lands, portrait position portrait no landscape this is landscape position and um i i have been so busy um i have missed you guys for a couple of weeks now first i was getting ready for my stamping retreat which took me like in all kinds of busy mode and then i was actually um last week at the stamping retreat and it was not in my home state so um i was traveling so i am still getting resituated here and um just so excited to jump back in with you hi rhonda so this may look a little familiar if you were at my new york stamping retreat you have this recipe i did change some things on it so the nice part about this card is you can change color designer paper um, the dyes that you use, the stamp sets you use, all kinds of things. And I like when things are so interchangeable and, and easy that way too. Let's pop over to my workspace. I'm gonna get you guys over there. Thanks for saying hi as you jump on. I'd like to know who's checking out live and replay and also on YouTube, make sure you're saying hi too. All right, transitioning. So if you're on my newsletter list, every Thursday I send out an email with the project and you've got a couple of pictures here to help you out you have the card recipe so you can create this at home you have the supplies I used for this card now this one's actually a little bit different from the stamp and retreat card recipe so um, make sure you guys that were at this stamping retreat this was your booklet of uh, card recipes make sure you are printing this this was our card at the retreat so let me show you how i'm so excited about this this was our card at the retreat so we used the country in designer series paper we used totally different dyes we used the sentimental park stamp set and dyes to create this one so you can see it's very similar to let me close up my book and move it aside this one which we are using the Courage and Faith stamp set this week. So this is part of my weekly class. I did a whole class on Monday, so make sure you're checking it out. This kind of flipped forward. So again, I went with the blues because I love, surprise, love the blues, right? So be of, be of good courage. Uh, very similar here in color. However, completely different designer series paper. This designer series paper comes from the Let's Go Fishing. So this is some of the designer series paper in the Let's Go Fishing pack. It's not all about fishing. Now there's some really great um, fish imagery if you're interested in the fish imagery, right? Fishing, fly fishing, maps, fishing lures, all that good stuff. But there's also really basic um, background colors that you can use too. So I always look through to see what colors are gonna go with what. So we're actually creating this one today, but I wanted to give you a little bit of um, some tips along the way as well. For this one, we're using the Something Fancy die. So these dies are a little bit different. I've already die cut my parts and pieces out, but I just wanted to show you what I've used. So these are the Something Fancy dies. They're very basic and I love a set of basic dies because you can do so much with them. We're gonna score our cardstock together. I've got all my designer series paper and my, my little mats cut so we can be quick and easy. So for this card, I use the biggest tag punch. So this kind of looks like a tag to me. So I use the biggest one of those. And then I use the first two, well actually there's only two of this, two of these. So I use these two dies for the center. Now you could definitely mix it up and use any, any dies. I mean, they don't even have to be this die set. You can use any dies that are gonna um, fit here on your paper and look fabulous. So we're gonna start out with some scoring because this whole fun fold is about the scoring and hopefully um, everything will be good. We're gonna keep good thoughts here for a second while I bring in my paper trimmer and we're gonna do some scoring together. So this is, uh, we're starting out with a piece of cardstock in the hot dog, four and a quarter by 11. So you wanna make sure you have your cardstock cut properly first and then we're gonna put it in 
um, I said I called this the landscape position I believe yes landscape position I'm gonna bring my directions over because we're scoring very specifically now when you put your paper in to score it I want you to start and I want you to keep moving it along don't flip it around or rotate it uh, we are gonna need the arm out so I'm gonna swing that open too but our first score line is two and a half so we're just gonna find two and a half on your trimmer Make sure you're not using the cutting blade on the Stampin' Up! trimmers. It is the lighter color blade for scoring. And they have new scoring blades, by the way. That's brand new in the online store if you need to replace your scoring blade. Super cool. They haven't had those before. After two and a half, we're going to three and three quarters. So we're sliding it down three and three quarters. Now we're going to go to six and three quarters. Now the six and three quarters, there's a, this is where the arm opens. So it's a little tricky here. So just make sure you're figuring out where six and a half is. You can't really see six and a quarter here, but six and a half, six and three quarters is our next score line. And after that, we're doing eight and a quarter. And another thing that I wanted to point out, you want to make sure as you're scoring that your paper is continuously flush with the top um, of your trimmer because if it's at an angle, your, your score lines are going to be crooked, right? We have straight paper. We need to keep it straight in the trimmer. So we have all of our scores right here. And we're going to do mountain valley, mountain valley. So our first one will be a mountain. That was our first score. And then we're in a valley. So we're tucking this one back under. Then we're going to mountain and fold upwards. And the last one is going to be a valley. Now, if you score these wrong, you can... Um, you can reflip so let's let's say you did valley mountain valley mountain and you're like oops that's the wrong way um, you can change them over and, and rotate them around you, you definitely want to try to score them properly the first time though i have been there you've got you guys have seen me i have scored paper wrong so i'm just going through each individual score line and burnishing them so that i can make sure i have exactly what i want so it really kind of just looks like ruffles right so i'm going to put it up here like this so we have mountain valley mountain valley as you're looking at it now the next thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the designer series paper so no matter what you're choosing right it's going to be gorgeous designer series paper always is now i put the um, cutting directions in the recipe but these are all three and three quarters inch tall so you want to make sure each of your layers here is three and three quarters inch tall right so you're kind of lining them up like this so they're the same height which is going to be important right so we've got three and three quarters by three and three quarters we have nope let me let me that's the designer paper boho blue this is boho blue four by four three and a half by four two and a quarter by four okay so they're all four tall and that's so that they can fit on the card in a nice matted position okay so when you have all of these it's wonderful and lovely but you have to remember that as you're cutting your mats or your designer series paper you, if, if you have an orientation like this one does you have to be mindful that they are all going on here like you're cutting your paper to the right height that's what I'm trying to say, the right height. So on this beautiful paper right here, there's really no orientation. So if I cut these in different ways, it would be okay because the flowers are very forgiving. So if it's easier for you to do something that doesn't have a grand orientation, definitely go for it. I had to, I had to really think about it when I was cutting this um, Let's Go Fishing paper because I wanted the lines to go horizontally as my card also goes horizontally. And I actually cut more paper than I needed because I was cutting it and then I realized like, oh, I just cut this one to be portrait instead of horizontal. And so those are all things, but I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere the designer series paper to each of these layers. Super easy, right? So far we've done nothing hard. We've, um, we scored our paper, we scored our, our card base, we burnished the creases, we have our recipe here that we're following for our cardstock and our designer paper. So these are all just lovely matted papers. And again, the boho blue, the misty moonlight, are absolutely gorgeous together. Now, when you're putting these on, we're going to start with the biggest one in the front. And this is our front panel that we're adhering to. So what's going to happen is on the back side, this is going to be loose. So you don't want to put glue all over the back of this because then you're going to glue your card completely shut. What I like to do is I like to just focus on where I am gluing. So I know that this is where my, cre my crease comes down here and I'm leaving that nice little mat 
So this is when I'm going to put my glue. And then when I put this on here, and I leave my little mat at the top and the bottom and on the left hand side, I know that I'm only getting the glue where I need it to be. So I don't even put it on the cardstock here. But if you wanted to try to figure out where it goes on your cardstock, you're perfectly able to. But this is going to flap and it's beautiful. Now we're going to focus on this middle flap. I'm going to fold this over just so we can see. So this middle flap right here starts here and comes off the end. Now this one doesn't come off the end as far. It only comes off a little bit. But again, we're going to be mindful of where glue is going to go. So I'm going to bring in my adhesive and then I'm going to layer on this nice piece right here and just make sure that I'm keeping it straight nice little mat all along the three sides right so I've got two of them that layer together so as I'm closing it you can see two of them now now this last one is super easy and maybe that's the one you want to start with because it is <laughs> sometimes doing those first few steps and getting it you know down pat just makes things just so much easier and that's just going to go here just like that. So you've got your three layers. I'm going to bring this out a little bit. And there we go. We got our layers on here and it's lovely. So now we're going to do some stamping and then we're going to just decorate. And, and I already have my little die cuts done. So again, we are using the Courage and Faith stamp set. And I'm going to show you how I decorated this, which is a little bit different from my original one. So I'll bring in my my beautiful sample here. So I'm using Boho in Night of Navy ink for this. And I use the Night of Navy ink, even though I don't have Night of Navy cardstock anywhere, I use the Night of Navy ink because I like how dark it is. It's black-ish, but it's not black, right? It's just that really beautiful, perfect color that we're gonna want. So um, that's the Trust in the Lord with All Your Heart. We've got Be of Good Courage. So I'm gonna put this up here on my little tag for the front and that's the stamping with Knight of Navy. Now we're going to come in with Boho Blue. Now this stamp set, the Courage and Faith stamp set, this is a standalone stamp set so of course it goes with all kinds of punches and dies but it's got these cute little images here also for some leafy things and so on and I'm using them this time on my card but I'm stamping off the Boho Blue ink so I'm going to just stamp off and I'm going to come in and kind of decorate the top of my little tag and I'm going to stamp off again and I'm going to come in and swoop across the bottom. It's got a nice little curve to it and I just felt that that dressed it up and it filled in some of that white that was you know like extra white right there's all kinds of white there from my sentiment not being so long. Now this last one is one that you might want to write something in so I am just going to stamp off with a different little leafy um, type stamp here and just kind of hug the bottom corner and I just love this like little it's almost like the delft blue and white just really pretty and that's it for the stamping so we have our ribbon and our assembly here and then we are done with this card and this is a really wow card so this would be one that you could you know have set aside and just when you're ready to wow somebody do it up. So of course I forgot to get out a new sheet of dimensionals so I'm going to be chopping up some of my edges here and we're going to roll with that. So let's start with the guy here in the back. Just want to make sure we're putting our dimensionals on the back side. So I did use the dimensionals on each of the white die cut pieces um, on this card and on the card from the stamping retreat as well and it just it helps to um, to fill in a little bit because this card has so many layers it's nice that it's not so flat right so we're just going to put this one right here in the middle on the back panel and as you close them if you see a little bit peeking out you may or may not but sometimes you just want to be aware that you might not want them to be peeking out the end but we should be good we're going to put trust in the lord with all your heart right here in the middle and I just took the paper off that. There we go. We'll get them on here. Oh, my papers are coming off before. Oh, this one. Okay, dimensional paper off. Maybe off. Maybe we're going to use a different one. This one's sticking to my finger now. Okay, moving on. Another one here. And it looks like, oh, I just kind of ch I chunked that all up. And so when I'm using my outside pieces, I'm pretty generous with them because sometimes they're bigger than what a regular dimensional would be, but we make it all work. This one's going to go right here in the middle of the second panel. So again, as you are cl closing your card, 
it's nice that they're like hidden behind. So just keep that in mind, whatever dies you're using, just to, just to keep them kind of small so you can hide what's happening on the inside. So when they look at the outside of the card, they're, um, they're surprised as they open it to see all of the things that unfold on the inside of the card. That was fun. I did that on purpose, unfold. All right, so we're gonna just pop these nice big chunky style dimensionals here. But before I do this last one, I really feel like I probably should do my ribbon. Now I recommend 20 inches of ribbon. That might be a lot of ribbon. This is gorgeous. This is actually Knight of Navy ribbon. So we are going to wrap this around. So from my original card, I want you to see that it wraps on the back really nicely. And we're just going to wrap it. So you need a lot of ribbon to wrap and tie a bow. So we're just going to snug that up there. We're just going to bring this up here. We're going to kind of even up our ends. And we're going to do our best attempt here at a bow. And we're going to try to keep it kind of toward the top. Now this is loose on here still. So I can wiggle it side to side and shift it over a little bit if I, if I need to. So we're going to think really wonderful bow thoughts right now about how happy our bow is going to be once it's on this card and it's beautiful and perfect in every way. We're still thinking happy thoughts. Hang on guys. I am going to do this this time. Positive thoughts. Love it. Okay. We got it. Here we go. And that's why you want lots of a lot of ribbon because then you can pull the ties at the end. You can adjust the bows a little bit. Now it doesn't have to be super tight ribbon. Don't, don't worry about like squeezing it real hard and making it like it's never gonna move. Cause what you can do and what I'm going to do, so just leave it a little bit looser. We're gonna bring in a glue dot and we're just gonna pop a glue dot right behind where this little bow knot would be and tuck it down. So now my bow is not going to move. Okay, so it's, it's there, it's permanent. And we're gonna go ahead and, which way do I wanna go with these? Sometimes I have a hard time deciding up, down. Okay, that looks good. We'll trim this guy just a little bit. Oh, that was a terrible trim job. Back to the ribbon and the trimming we go. Okay, much better. So there's this nice little bow and it looks pretty on the backside too. It's just, just really beautiful, cohesive. Okay, now we can put on our last little piece here. If I can get my dimensionals off, my little papers here. And you kind of want to have your ribbon on first, so that way you can put your, and I thought about angling this. Let's see, and I, I at, the, at the last second, I went straight with it. I thought about angling it. I'm gonna try it because I'm not like always a fan of the angles, but there we go. So this one is angled, this one is straight. I need to know what you guys prefer, angled or, are you angled or straight? Um, and then I'm gonna bring in some of these great adhesive back solid gems. They come in three fabulous new colors, but we've got the boho blue here, which matches perfectly with our paper. So I'm just gonna pop a few of these on here. I might put some of these up higher a little bit. And I actually, they come in three sizes, so you get a large, and then a small and then a really small the tiny tiny small ones are adorable um so i just went ahead and just added one to each of the white panels one i added some to each of the white panels so i've got three three and then one uh two at the back and there it is just like that so when you fold it closed it looks like this this will fit in a regular a2 size envelope and that is our b of good courage card which again of course is very similar to the let's celebrate you card happy birthday we did this one as a birthday card so you can see that you could change up your patterns your colors um, this had a bigger die here than the one on the front so you can definitely change them up to create different looks and it is a really fabulous card it's a fabulous fun fold card I love these cards. Hi, Jess. Hi, Patty. Yeah, Jess, I love the blues too. Blues, right? I, um, more and more, I'm working with blues. And I, I know I go through color auras, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. But sometimes I'm like, I'm really into a specific color. Lately, it's the blues, but um, also surprisingly, a little bit of yellow. And I know there's a girl named Jane down in Tennessee who would approve of me saying that I like yellow a lot recently. So that is our fun fold card. If you are not on my newsletter list yet, and you would like to get these weekly fun fold recipes, you can definitely sign up. I have a sign up on my blog. I can share a link in the comments if you want to know how to find me. Um, so thank you for sticking around with me a little bit today for our fun fold. Um, I will be back on Monday 
Um, we're gonna get right back into the regular swing of things. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to share this really quickly. I'm like so excited. My copy of the new holiday mini catalog came in the mail today. This is the front, I can show you the front. I can also show you the back, isn't that pretty? Uh, this just came in the mail. I actually haven't even opened it. And I've ripped the plastic off of it. I haven't opened it yet. I cannot share what's inside yet. I can, um, I'm definitely, I already did a pre-order, so I've already got stuff coming in. I, there will be an unboxing in, in the near future of the things that I pre-ordered. Um, so anyway, demos get to check this all out now, which is really exciting. It's also an exciting month to join Stampin' Up. You can join, pre-order, I'd be ahead of the game, right? And you don't have to worry about minimums and stuff. You've got six whole months to get that all decided whether you want to stick around or not. But anyway, um, I have some great stuff to share with you soon. I've got to go through my book now and mark it with my highlighter of what I've already ordered. Um, so look for an unboxing sometime next week as well. It's going to be, it's an exciting time. I love the, the fall catalog is my favorite. I love the Halloween, the Thanksgiving, the fall, the Christmas, the winter so amazing i am ready bring it on so okay that's it for me i just want to share my excitement thanks for hanging out with me until next time stay inspired create something beautiful and share the love bye everybody